Hi there, Preps 1s and 2s. This week we're going to be looking at net and wall games and striking games. And those are pretty much any sport that involves using a racket or a bat to hit a ball. So for today, I'm going to try and make it a little bit easier on you because I know I've been getting you to find lots of different equipment. But this time, you just need to find two things. First of all, we're going to make our sock ball like we've been doing usually. Unless you already have a small ball around the house, then that's great and you can use that. And secondly, you need a wooden spoon, which you'll probably find in your kitchen, or a ladle. Something just like a spoon shape. You could even use a spatula if you really wanted to, okay? Today's lesson, we're going to be working on um, developing our bat eye or racket eye coordination. So usually when I talk about hand eye coordination, it's knowing where your hand is and being able to use it to catch a ball or catch an item. But when we start using a racket or a bat or a club, what happens is that the end of that racket is actually further away from us and it's further away from our hand. So we need to try and get used to uh, the distance between the end of the racket or the bat that you're trying to hit and where your hand is. And the best way to practice that is with a couple of the drills that I'm going to show you today. Now remember, when I show you a drill, you need to press pause and then you need to practice it yourself for about three to five minutes, okay? Not too long. So the first drill that we're going to do today, we're going to be using our wooden spoon a little bit like a hockey stick and our ball is going to be on the ground. So I put my ball on the ground and I'm going to be bending over and I'm going to be looking at the ball with my spoon in hand and I'm going to be tapping it from side to side and I'm going to tap it around the room and I'm going to keep control of it. You could put down obstacles to go between, so you might like to put a chair down and you might try to tap around the chair through a leg and come back. You might like to tap to the side Tap one way, then the other way. Go forwards, come backwards. You could go around in a circle. But you need to try and keep control of that ball. Keep your eye on it at all times. And like I said, I might want to put an obstacle down that I can go around. Maybe my other spoon. Maybe a pot plant. And I could do figure eights around that. Tapping, keeping control of it, bent over, eyes on there all the time, pushing it forward, using both sides of the spoon to do that. It's your turn to do it now. Press pause. And don't forget, if you'd like to film yourself doing it, you can do that as well. Okay, everyone, you should be back by now. And the next activity we're going to do it's sort of like catching the ball and throwing it like you would with your hand up and down but we're going to be using the spoon so I'm going to put my ball on the spoon I'm going to flick it up and try and catch it back in the spoon now the bigger your spoon is the easier it is so I might even like to try and grab a ladle ladles are a little bit bigger and I can throw it up and I can catch it just like this. Oop. It will fall out sometimes, but you just try your best. Keeping your eye on it. The rounder you make your ball, the easier it will be to sit on it. I'm watching. I'm gauging that distance. I had to sort of change the distance because my spoon became a little bit shorter, even though the head became bigger. So... I think you should try and push pause now and see if you can do 10 catches up and down on your spoon. Okay, press pause, have a go at that. Okay everyone, we should be back now and up to our last task. And our last task is actually going to be trying to hit the ball. And we're going to be hitting the ball with the stick or our spoon but you need to make sure you've got plenty of space around you. Make sure that there's no ornaments nearby. Um, you're not close to a window. If you can go outside for this one, it's probably a good idea. 
but what we're going to be doing is practicing a forehand. So a forehand can be used in tennis, it can be used in squash or badminton. A forehand, the technique is almost like a pull shot in cricket as well, or swinging of the baseball bat, so it's a very versatile type of shot. And what we're going to do, and it will take a lot of practice, is you're going to stand side on with the spoon in your dominant hand, so for me it's my right hand. I'm going to throw the ball up in the air, and I'm just going to try and tap it forward, okay? Mum or dad could help you with this, or your older brother or sister. The throws don't need to go really high in the air, they just need to be little ones. And this isn't about how far you can hit it, I'm not worried about that. It's just about whether you can get that distance. Because what I notice is that a lot of people, they'll throw it up and they'll hit it where their hand is, and they'll hit it short. So we need to make sure that we're getting the right distance to the end of the spoon. Should look like this. Not bad, a little tap. Remember I said we're not looking for distance. That wasn't a bad one at all. Pretty good. So remember, if the ball's too close to you, you might need to go back a little bit. So you might need to move with that. If it's too far away, you might need to go towards it. So I'll practice doing a shot maybe where the ball's too far away now. See how I stepped towards it and I got closer? If the ball's too close to me, I can step back as well. So it's all about getting that distance, keeping your eye on the ball at all times and you'll do fine. Practice hitting the ball about 20 times if you can. If you can't do that many, do 10. Remember, if you'd like to uh, video yourself during these lessons, you can, but you don't have to, so don't feel pressured like you need to, okay? All right, everybody, I hope you enjoy this week's lesson, and I will see you next week. Bye.